Hello and welcome back to Broadside Game with me, Zug. So today we're carrying on with our Psyker builds and the build for you today is an incredibly high risk, high reward kind of setup. Um, I'll say this right now, I would not suggest this build if you have not got a lot of practice with the Psyker because it is extremely unforgiving. But it is also hilarious to play. So let's jump in and take a look. So as you can see, we're still using the Demius and the Surge Force Staff. So the Demis, we're running like this with Flak and Unarmored to help with Mixed Hordes and Blessings wise, we're going for Slaughter and Uncanny Strikes. But if you want a little bit more uh, defense, you can always run it with Uncanny Strikes and Deflector. And for that, I'd suggest Black Maniac, Flak Unarmored. But it's up to you. I'm going for the full DPS on this, so we're going Flak Unarmored with Slaughter and Uncanny Strikes. As for the staff, we're going for the Surge Force Staff with Unyielding and Critical Strike on it. But if you don't want the crit, you can change that to Carapace and Unyielding to help with boss and large enemy damage. And then for the Curios, we're still running the Mixed Bag, but you can change these out to both Health and both Toughness if you want, but I prefer running them like this. So this one has got toughness with increased toughness, combat ability regeneration and damage resistance gunners. Max health with more max health, combat ability regeneration and damage resistance gunners. And then we've got the last one, which is kind of mandatory these days on the Psyker, especially in higher level difficulties, is the Stamina Curio, which I begrudge running because I hate it, but it is also completely necessary. If you want to dodge anything, this is what you need to use. And on this, we've got increased toughness, combat boost generation, and damage resistance gunners as well. I'll just quickly point show out why it's so important. As you can see, as we block, we have three more pips of stamina, which means we can no longer be cornered. Well, we can be, but it makes it less dangerous by rages and maulers and the like. Usually, they will shred through your stamina and then kick you to the floor. But with the increased stamina, we can actually dodge out the way and keep moving. And if you go for the deflector, you're even safer. But at this point, if you're playing Damnation and up, I would highly recommend getting a three stamina trinket. It will make your survivability so much higher. Even if you only try it, that was wrong. Even if you try it for one or two matches, I, I, I promise you, you will feel the difference. You can get away with it on lower difficulties, but if you're aiming to play for the harder ones, I would say get used to using this. Right, so that's the weapon setup. Just go over it one more time so you can pause it if you need to. Right, now we jump into the talents. So, as I said, this is an extremely high risk, high reward build. So we're missing a lot of toughness nodes at the top, but we are taking metal. Critical hits replenish 5% toughness because we're going to be critting a lot, which is why I put crit on the staff. Perfect timing. 3% warp damage on for 10 seconds on critical hit stacks five times. Again, working towards that crit. Quietitude, replenish 5% toughness for each 10% perils quelled. This is basically one of our only toughness regenerators with these two. Perilous combustion, killing an elite or special enemy applies three stacks of soul blaze to nearby enemies causing damage over time. This is just going to help us stack that damage. Going a toughness boost here into Brain Rupture, and we're taking Kinetic Flare. We aren't going to be using this very, very much. We may do if we have to pop a Sniper or something at range, but otherwise this is basically here for the Kinetic Flare buff, which is why we're not taking Kinetic Resonance. Brain Burst, or Brain Rupture, sorry, is just not that great anymore. Even um, combined with Empowered Psionics, it's still not great. But you know, if you want to, you can put a point in Kinetic Resonance, but I would highly suggest not doing it. And then we're moving on to Perils Generation Re Resistant. Wildfire, when an enemy dies while affected by your Soul Blaze, nearby enemies each gain up to four stacks of Soul Blaze. They cannot gain more stacks than the dying enemy had. So this is just going to help us lay down more damage. And then Psychonic Zora, decrease the ability cooldown for your allies of coherence by 5% on Elite or Special Kill. This is going to allow us to use Venting Shriek more. Kinetic Presence. 7.5% damage against elite enemies for you and your allies in coherency. This used to be 10%. I don't know why they dropped it. Uh, one with the warp game toughness damage reduction of 10 to 33% based on your current perils. We're going to be riding our perils pretty high. Around 85% is the 
a line we kind of want to go up to. And Venting Shriek is there to save us from uh, going over our perils and exploding, becoming Eruption, and we're grabbing Creeping Flames to add more Soul Blaze around. So this is just going to help uh, beat down hordes while we're concentrating on the heavier uh, the heavier enemies and specials inside of the horde. And then we come along here grabbing the Peril Generation, 10% health, and a critical chance boost because we want that crit. We're taking Warp Rider, deal up to 20% damage increase as your perils increase, which is why we want to be riding around 85%, 80%, and this is just going to help with our damage. And then, of course, we're coming down into Warp Siphon. So we're going Puppet Master, Solidarity, Warp Siphon, killing an elite or special enemy gains your warp charge for 25 seconds, stacking four times. Your next combat ability spends all available warp char charges to reduce the cooldown of that combat ability by 7.5% per warp charge. And these are also going to give us damage and toughness. Replenish 10% toughness over five seconds on gaining a new warp charge, gaining a new warp charge during this time resets the timer. And then imp our uh, appearance Hyperion Empowerment increases all base damage by 4% for each warp charge. Then in Fire Reborn, killing an elite with Soul Blaze has a 10% chance to grant you a warp charge. Again, we're stacking up that Wildfire, Perilous Combustions, and Creeping Flames just to help with this, and also it's more damage. And Warp Battery, we can now hold up to 6 warp charges. So we're going to be stacking these up really quickly, so don't feel like you can't Venting Shriek when you need to. This is your emergency button. So if things are looking sketchy or you need to make room, you just you blast Venting Shriek. It doesn't matter that you lose your warp charges. You'll gain them up almost instantly once again. As you can see, that's the brain burst going off. It's not massively predictable. It will just go off where it wants to, but you will occasionally find it clutches the hell for you. Well, it clutches the game like hell for you. And when it does work, you'll be very happy it works. But like I said, Venting Shriek, don't feel like you can't use it because you lose your warp charges. If you are being run down by a horde or by maulers, rages, whatever, you can use this just to stagger them back and make room. And also you use it to spread around as much soul blaze as you can and to get rid of perils when things are getting sketchy. If you find you don't have enough time to quell, Venti Shriek is there for you. And as you can see, the cooldown of Venti Shriek is incredibly fast. I know I'm only killing specials, but this is based on Damnation and Auric where specials will be basically mixed into everything that's going on. On lower difficulties, it will not be this fast because the, the the spread of the monster density is not what it's going to be like in the higher difficulties. So, you know, your experiences may vary depending what level you're playing at. But as you can see, damage is pretty damn decent for this. Even on Carapace and the heavier enemies. It's, it's quite a one-trick pony to build. It's all about laying down as much damage as you can with that Surge Staff. And if you don't want to run the Demius with Slaughter and Uncanny Strikes or Uncanny Strikes and Deflection, you can run the uh, Dueling Sword. I run this with Shred and Uncanny Strikes. Let's just make sure this is the one I'm thinking of. I'm pretty sure this is. And I'll show you again. It. Yeah, there you go. The Dueling Sword... It's just incredibly unpleasant. Not only are the light attacks nice sweeping strikes, the special action is a jab to the face, and every heavy is also a jab to the face, which can deal with crushes, maulers, rages, with little to no problem. It's a nice sword to use. I quite enjoy it. I tend to just stick with the Demius or the Ilias just because you get that increased safety of being able to quell like during while you're fighting. But of course you can use whatever you want. I'll show you some examples. You can use the the Shock Maul if you want to. I run this with Opportunity and Thrust. 
and generally the perks would be Maniac and Flak. Uh, or you can run a combat dagger. And usually this is Lacerate and... Oh, what the hell was it? Sorry, give me one second, guys. I've completely forgotten what the other... I don't remember. I'll leave it in the, in the description. So I don't run the dagger very often on the on this guy, so I don't even know where my dagger's gone. It's usually lacerate and something else. Um, bleed stacks on crit, basically. I do apologise. I completely forgot what it's called. But you know, there you have it. A very high risk, high reward build, but I would not suggest this for uh, if you're just getting started out with the psyker. If you are just getting started out, check out the Surge Smite build. It's, it's very fun, very safe, and teaches you quite a lot of aspects of playing a Psyker. And of course, I just want to pr uh, mention that these builds are not perfect. You know, there will be flaws in them, and um, that's okay. And if anyone sees a glaring flaw, please do let me know in the comments below if I've missed something, because, you know, as much as I like to think so, I'm not a god. I do get stuff wrong. <laughs> so anyway... Thank you very much for watching, folks. If you've enjoyed, please like, subscribe, bring that bell for notifications. It really does help us out. And uh, until the next video, take it easy. I'll see you later.